my beautiful lovelies hi it's emmy welcome back today i'm going to be making a cheese burger aspic now an aspic is a molded jello usually meat based clear gelatin that sometimes has either meats or vegetables suspended in this clear jelly so i've never made an aspic before but i have made plenty of retro jello recipes if you've missed those videos i'll put the playlist there and down below there's just something magical and mysterious about jello something about the wobbly transparency that i am just fascinated by so today's recipe is inspired by marty mcbrunnelfly on twitter who sent me his version of the cheeseburger aspic which he said he dreamt after he watched my tuna jello video <laughs> So he tweeted me an image of his creation and I knew I had to make my own version. And it helps if you have a mold like this. Now I found this years and years ago in a thrift store. I believe it's a terrine mold to make pâtés or an aspic mold just based on its shape. I love this thing. I don't use it to make aspics. This is actually the first aspic I've ever made. I actually use it for homemade ice cream and just all kinds of great, great things. If you ever find one like this, I recommend it. It's by Mirror. So this I made yesterday. Let me walk you through the steps of how I got it to this stage. So for a container this size, you're going to need six cups of gelatin. So you're going to need six envelopes of unflavored gelatin. You're going to sprinkle the gelatin on top of about a half a cup of water. Set that aside and allow it to absorb all that water and bloom. Meanwhile, in a saucepan, we're going to bring four cups of chicken stock to a boil, along with two and a half cups of water. So once that starts to get hot, we're going to add our gelatin and then bring this to a boil to make sure the gelatin is completely dissolved. So now that our gelatin's prepared, we're gonna take our mold and put two cups of the gelatin in the bottom of it. I'm gonna place that in the refrigerator and allow it to set up. Okay, so while that's setting up, we can prepare our burgers. And this is how I love to make burgers. I use a cast iron skillet and I love to do this smash technique. I love a thin burger with a nice crust. Get the pan nice and screaming hot, put your meat down and then take a spatula and smash it nice and flat liberally salt and pepper that. After a couple minutes, we're gonna scrape the pan and flip it over, and you should have a nice crust on top. And if you wanna make these a cheeseburger, then go ahead and add a couple slices of American cheese, and then put a lid on it, and just let it steam for about 30 seconds until the cheese is fully melted. So for the burgers to accommodate this mold, I'm using slider buns, and you can add whatever condiments or vegetables you like. I'm adding onion, tomato, lettuce, so now that the burgers are assembled, we can check on our gelatin, and it should be either firm or pretty thick to the touch. Then we can take our burgers, and we're gonna invert them and place three of them inside of the mold. We're doing this upside down because we're going to unmold it in the reverse. So you might wanna give your burgers a little bit of a squeeze because we wanna make sure that it fits into the mold. Next, we're gonna take about two cups of our cool gelatin and pour it around and over our burgers. We wanna make sure we get into all the nooks and crannies. Okay, then we're gonna pop this back in the refrigerator again and allow it to set up a little bit more. That takes about 20 minutes or so. Then we're gonna take it out again, and once that's gelled up, then we're gonna add our final layer of gelatin. Now we're gonna place this whole thing into the fridge and allow it to set up at least for four hours. I did mine overnight. So this is where we are now. We have three cheeseburgers suspended in gelatin. I can't wait to see how this turned out. So if you've watched any of my retro jello recipes, you know that I always find it challenging getting these jellos out of the mold. But lots of you have chimed in and offered different techniques to try to get the jello out. First things first, I'm going to shake horizontally. That seemed to work in my last video. And second, I'm going to try the hot towel technique. I'm gonna use some hot water on a dish towel and see if I can coax it out here. All right, let's slide this open and see what I got. Ooh, look at that. Well, there you can see my little burgers inside there. Can you see them? Oh, glistening. Now, I'm gonna just dump that over and use this hot towel. Okay, now we're gonna lay that on top and allow that to warm the pan up a bit. I've done the technique where I actually dunk the pan into some hot water, but then I find that there's a little bit too much melting for my liking, so I'm hoping this will be the proper amount of heat. And shake horizontally. Oh, I did hear something. No, that wasn't the terrine. Okay, let's do that again. Give our little gelatin a little hug, a little warm hug. 
Oh, isn't that nice, Jello? I hear flapping, but I think that's just the dish towel. Right? heat. Maybe my water's not quite hot enough. Okay, add some more hot water. I've done several of these jellos and I'm certainly not a pro when it comes to this old molding process. Ugh. Certainly it worked out. Ugh. Come on. You want to come out, you do. Maybe I need to add more on the sides. Okay, let's try this technique where you kind of pull it away from the sides. I forgot to do that. Yeah, it's binding on the sides, that's it. Okay, so push it away from the sides. Now let's try it. This is awful, come on. Okay, more warm towels. Oh, that flapping sound is just so... Oh my gosh, come out. All right, more hot water bath. Oh, oh, look, yes. She's coming out. I heard more squanching. Oh boy, come on. I think it came out. Yes. Oh, yes. There is cheeseburger terrine. slide oh my goodness yay i'm so excited about this look at this cheeseburger aspic cheeseburger in jello <laughs> so weird and here it is is it an amazing three cheeseburgers encased in jello it's like han and carbonite except it's gelatin and cheeseburgers all right, let's cut this thing. I'm gonna cut myself a nice slice. Oh my gosh. Using a little sawing motion here, trying to keep the integrity of the burger. Okay, ready for the reveal? <laughs> and there it is, the burger. Tureen, oh my gosh. Alrighty, so let's give this a taste. I want a center slice here. Doink. All right. <laughs> Alrighty, let's give the cheeseburger jello a taste. It actually looks pretty good. It looks like some of the gelatin went between the burger and the bun, but there's the cheese, there's the burger, there's my onion, tomato, lettuce, and bun. I would have liked a little bit thicker layer of gelatin right here. That's why I poured the initial layer but perhaps the warmth of the bun melted through. If I were to do this again, I would make sure that my cheeseburgers were completely cool. All right, let's give this a go. <laughs> it's so strange. All right, here we go. Itadakimasu. Hmm. Man, that's very odd. <laughs> The flavors are great. It tastes like a delicious cheeseburger. It's the jello action that's going on there that makes it seem very, very strange. The texture is just like jello, a little bit firmer than your typical jello, but the flavor is savory. It tastes like 
chicken broth because we added chicken broth to it. <laughs> but the combination with the cheeseburger actually works because it's savory and savory. It's just a textural issue. The jello and the hamburger are very odd textures. The bread, I'm surprised, actually did not get soggy. It's still light and fluffy, not soggy at all. The lettuce, of course, is not as crisp as it once was. The flavors are all very much cheeseburger and cheeseburger texture, just surrounded by some very, very firm chickeny flavored jello. It actually doesn't taste bad. It's a textural thing. I think it would really repulse a lot of people. <laughs> But I think it's super fun. I think it's super silly. I think it would be amazing to take this to a party. I think people would be flabbergasted, amazed, intrigued, and would have to taste it because it's just, look at this. I love it. <laughs> I should try to eat this like a burger. Mmm. That's actually an improvement. If we eat it like a burger, it's more like a burger. Mm-hmm. So thanks again to Marty McBrundlefly for the inspiration. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed that one. I hope you guys learned something. If you want to share a recipe with me, please do so on social media. You can find me there. Share this video with your friends, and I shall see you in my next one. Toodaloo. Take care. Bye.